Ever wondered how large language models like ChatGPT decide which word to say next? You might already know from LLM basics that after each word, an LLM assigns probability to every possible next word. And then it must pick one. Sometimes it chooses the most likely word and sometimes it goes for something more surprising. But what guides that choice? In this video, we'll break down the so-called decoding strategies, the algorithms LLMs use to turn probabilities into actual words. We'll look at the most popular ones like top P, top K and temperature sampling, and we'll also talk about this new method called min P, which adapts to the model's confidence and has quickly become a favorite in open source frameworks. Whether you want your model to be consistent or creative, the decoding method makes the difference. Large language models like ChatGPT don't generate whole sentences at once. They go word by word, or more precisely, token by token, where a token is usually a word or part of a word. And at each step, the model doesn't just say, here's the next token, because it was never trained to do that. Instead, it was trained to assign probabilities to all possible tokens in the vocabulary, with the loss function encouraging it to make the correct next token from the training data as close close to probability 1 as possible and all others close to 0. And when we ask the model to generate something new, it follows the same principle as during training. It assigns probabilities to every token in the vocabulary. Imagine the prompt, the mother, and the model might predict something like saw with 30% probability, on with 15% and so on for thousands of possible tokens. So now the model has a full landscape of possibilities and from this landscape it must choose one token to predict. And that's where sampling strategies come in. We have this nice probability distribution, why not just always pick the token with the highest probability? That's what the greedy decoding method does, it always picks the most likely next token. It's simple, fast and deterministic. It's deterministic because the LLM for the same input will always produce the same probabilities, their scores, so it will be always the same token which has the highest probability. But greedy decoding is not a very good algorithm because the most probable token isn't always the most interesting one, especially over long sequences. If you take the safest option, you get output that's flat and even worse repetitive, like I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like always choosing the middle word on your phone's autocomplete. It quickly gets stuck in a loop. Because here's the thing, good writing and good conversation isn't about being constantly predictable for something to feel interesting to read or listen to. It needs a balance between the familiar and unexpected. It should be half predictable, half surprising. That's exactly what sampling allows. Instead of always choosing the top token, sampling lets the model occasionally pick a slightly less likely but still reasonable option. This adds just enough uncertainty to keep things dynamic, diverse and engaging. Depending on how you sample, you can control this balance, making the output more creative or more consistent. That trade-off between control and creativity is so important that, as you'll see in the next code examples, Simply switching the decoding strategy can make even an older model like GPT-2 sound much more interesting without changing the model itself. All we'll do is turn on sampling. Let's start with the most basic approach other than greedy decoding, namely plain random sampling. Once the model has assigned probabilities to all possible tokens, random sampling just picks one token at random according to those probabilities. So if the has 60% chance, mat 30% and down 5%, then the will be chosen only 60% of the time and there is a lot of chance left that the model surprises you with for example 5% of the time saying down. This method adds a lot of creativity being so unpredictable and for short generations that can actually be a good thing. But because it's purely probabilistic, random sampling can easily go off the rails. The model might pick a low probability token early on and that choice can snowball into weird or incoherent output. That's why most real world systems don't use plain random sampling, but instead use controlled sampling strategies that guide that creativity. Let's look at those next.
To make random sampling a bit safer, one common strategy is called top K sampling, where instead of sampling from an entire probability distribution, the decoding algorithm first sorts all tokens by their probability and then keeps only the top K most likely ones, and everything else gets cut off. So if K is 10, the model picks randomly from just the top 10 candidates. This avoids weird low probability words, but still allows variety within a reasonable range. Top K is great when you want your output to be somewhat creative, but still coherent and grounded. But it also has a drawback. The threshold K is fixed. Sometimes the top K tokens capture 95% of the total probability mass, other times they only cover very little of the total probability mass. So K doesn't always adapt well to different situations, that's why researchers came up with a more flexible method to make top K smarter. It's called top P sampling, but it's also known as nucleus sampling. Instead of keeping a fixed number K of top K tokens, Top P sampling looks at the cumulative probability. It starts from the highest probability token and moves down the list, adding up probabilities until the total exceeds some threshold P, say 90%. Then it keeps only that set of tokens and samples from them. Then the rest is cut off, just like in top K. So sometimes if a few tokens are very likely, the nucleus might only include three or four options. Other times, when the probabilities are more spread out, it might include 20 or 30. This makes top P sampling adaptive to the uncertainty over the vocabulary and context aware. That's why top P is the default sampling method in many popular LLMs. And of course, you can still tune the value of P to make the output more predictable or more wild. Want more chaos? Raise P. Want more control? Lower it. While these existing strategies use the probability distribution as is, it's now time to talk about temperature sampling. It's a simple but powerful parameter that changes the shape of the probability distribution itself. It only affects the softmax step, where the model's raw scores, called logits, are turned into probabilities between 0 and 1. The temperature T is applied directly in the softmax formula when T equals 1, you get the standard softmax. A temperature below 1, like 0 0.5, makes the distribution sharper. We see here tokens 0 to 4, which we have sorted according to imaginary probabilities. As you see, a temperature of 0 0.5 exaggerates the differences between high and low probabilities, making the model more confident and conservative. A temperature above 1, like here 2, does the opposite. It flattens the distribution, making rare tokens more likely and injecting more randomness into the sampling. So set a temperature low for precise answers, set it to high for more playful or surprising responses. And you can combine it with any of the other strategies we've seen so far, like top P or top K, to get the variety you want. Now, Here's a newer, increasingly popular strategy, which I've seen at iClear this year, called min-p sampling. Like top p, it filters out probability tokens before sampling, but instead of using a fixed probability mass like keep the top 90%, min-p is dynamic. It adapts based on the model's confidence. It looks at the probability of the most likely token and sets a dynamic cutoff based on that. For example, it might say, only keep tokens that are at least 10% as likely as the top token, meaning keep everything above 6% and throw away the rest. So if the model is very confident, say one token has 60% probability, then only a few high probability options are kept, like in this example, but if the model is less certain and the top token has only 20% probability, then many other options pass the threshold. This means that min-p automatically tightens or loosens the sampling pool depending on how confident the model is, balancing coherence when it's sure and diversity when it's not. It's especially useful at high temperatures, where other methods often get chaotic. That's why min-p has quickly been adopted in frameworks like Hugging Face and VLLM. Now, what about other tricks? Language models tend to repeat themselves, especially in longer texts. To fix that, we can apply penalties to tokens that have been already used. A repetition penalty lowers the chances of picking a token again, and the frequency penalty makes that effect stronger the more a token has been repeated. 
Now, before we wrap up the sampling methods, there's one more strategy that's often used in applications like machine translation, namely beam search. Unlike sampling, beam search is a deterministic method that keeps track of multiple promising sequences at once. You can think of it like a branching tree. At each step, instead of picking just one token, it keeps the top n sequences, called beams, and expands each of them with their most likely next tokens. And then it scores all of the candidates and keeps the best ones going. That gives you a wider view of possible continuations and helps avoiding getting stuck in a bad path early on. But it also tends to favor safe, high probability outputs, so it's less creative than sampling. It's mostly used when precision matters more than variety, like in translation or summarization systems. So next time you see a language model generate a sentence, remember to get to the probabilities is just part of the hard job it's doing, because then it needs to pick the next token from those probabilities. If you want consistency, go for low temperature sampling. But if you're after creativity, top P or min P with a higher temperature gives you more expressive and diverse results. The code we have shown here for GPT-2 also works for the modern LLMs on Hugging Face, so do try them out with the collab linked in the description below. There's no single best method, it all depends on what kind of output you want. This has been our short explainer of decoding strategies. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a like, share it with a friend or drop a comment with your favorite sampling strategy. And if you want more AI topic breakdowns, don't forget to subscribe for the next coffee break.